Hello and welcome back to another episode of Power Rangers Lore. Today I'll be discussing none other than the very first battleizer ever in Power Rangers. The one that started it all. Not even Tommy Oliver has the ability to say that he had the first ever battleizer. No, this had to go straight to Andros in Power Rangers in Space. And he didn't even know he had this power, which made sense. They were all canon to why he never used it beforehand. Now, what exactly is the Battleizer? Well, first off, it is a power-up of sorts. It is essentially battle armor, such as battle-ready armor, essentially going over the body, protecting it, enhancing it, and giving it far more special powers than any other normal form of a Power Ranger has ever seen before. This is the very first in line, also, of many that would come to replicate this power. And, well, it all started in space. Essentially, Season 6 of Power Rangers. Now, where did it all start? Well, it all began when Andros, Carlos, and a little girl named Sylvie, along with many other citizens of Angel Grove, were captured by a monster who attacked out of the blue, scanned them, and sent them to the Secret City. The Secret City is a, essentially a work depot area where Astronomer is building an army of brainwashed humans to make into our next army of sorts. You can probably think that eventually they are going to be turned into, well, hmm, the Coronatrons, all that type of stuff, like minions, for special little minion people here and there. So if we don't know, know what they were beforehand, maybe they're just brainwashed people. We never know. Now getting further. They are captured and unable to morph because there is some sort of dampener around the area preventing them from morphing entirely at all. The rest of the team is back in Angel Grove realizing what's happened and tries to devise a way to save them. Their plan is to sneak into the secret city after being captured, place a bomb at the antenna and destroy it allowing them to morph and take care of the issues at hand. Now at the time of the, well, them being taken, Andrews and Carlos didn't know they couldn't morph until they tried to fight off the minions of evil and realize then they can't morph and are quickly overpowered and thrown in handcuffs. Now Sylvie quickly picks up something off the ground after she sees, well, Carlos run off with Andros and Rilla gives it later to Carlos going, I found this on the ground, give this back to your friend. And it's none other, none other than the Red Morpher what she quickly realizes he's a ranger too because she had already in previous episode blackmailed Carlos to hang out with her because she found out that he was a power ranger. Right then and there she starts plotting in her own way of going I'm gonna become friends with all the rangers. Carlos tries to hide it but he in the end gives up and goes yes he's a ranger you can't tell anybody and she goes don't worry I wasn't going to I really like to be friends with the power rangers and he goes fine. He takes it back to Andros and Andrews is like going, oh my goodness, I didn't realize. Also, does that mean that Sylvie knows? And he's like, yeah, she knows. And she's like right there going, yeah, I know. I know. I figured it all out. I'm so amazing. Now, this is when they just start discussing the fact that they don't have the ability to morph. And they do have the lesser powers in the morpher of activating the ability to break the chains, getting some extra powers off of his one and two. But... He never, it's all he says. He's like, well, we can do two, we can break the chains off, but we go any higher than that, I'm a little scared. Sylvie goes, why not press three? And Carlos goes, yeah, why don't you press three? What, what does three do? And he goes, I don't know. It's, I never used it before, but I, it seemed like he was warned about it, like there was too much power going to be coursing through him that it could possibly do more harm than help. And that's all we get from that in base interaction. Well, they go and try to fight off things here and there. The battle goes on, and well, they're getting their butts kicked pretty handily. Meanwhile, the other team is continuing on from there, doing some more battles. They are fighting off, well, the minions and play the bomb and blow up the said dampener in the area, allowing the rangers to then morph. However, they're unable to as they're hanging on to basically whatever they can hold to before they fall to their deaths. Well, the Red Ranger is getting his butt kicked, it's thrashed pretty hard, and is thrown to the ground by some shrubberies. While Carlos tries to hold him back, he is also near his limits. Now, in those bushes is none other than Sylvie, and she looks at him and goes, I'm gonna help you. But she doesn't say it out loud, she just said, by her way of helping, is by pushing the three button. 
which she had no idea what it did. And Carlos kind of, Carlos has no idea what's going on, but Andros looks at it real quickly and goes, what have you done? <laughs> like, that whole expression of going, you might have just killed me. Well, power surges through him, almost electrifying his entire muscular body, and all his muscles are just blaring with pain as he cries out, and he then gets this massive suit of armor all around him. Yes, not just normal, but six-pack abs, wings of red and white, and well, looks like a missile launcher's as well. He is fully battleized up in his red battleizer ranger armor that has two modes, regular and fly mode. The fly mode is only slightly different because it has expanded its wings out and about. Now, upon doing this, the monster doesn't seem too impressed, but it starts going, oh, I'll take you out right now. Well, right as about, he's about to take out the monster, he turns around and sees his friends falling to their deaths. He f takes off flying like the speeding jet that he is, catches them, lands them down, and then destroys the monster with a barrage of rockets. An utterly annihilating the creature without any issue at all. He then lands, demorphs from that form, and goes on to help the rangers in the final battle against the gigantified creature. From then on there, he uses the armor pretty sparingly, fighting it every once in a while, using it when he can. However, in the season finale, when he's fighting against Eclipse and Darkonda, they both pretty easily defeat him. No real problems. They're both at their highest, and he's been weakened several times already. But Eclipse and Darkonda don't really see it as a major like issue for them. They probably both studied it and learned how to fight against it after his problems here and there dealing with the said armor. They can see his weaknesses. If he can't fly, he's not really his major advantage there is the flight and speed of it, and the rockets. If they can't, let, he's not going to shoot a rocket two feet from him without taking some backlash there. Now, what else does this armor do? Well. It increases his strength, but how does it do so? It doesn't just give him six-pack abs, guys, it, as it shows in the armor itself. No, it actually has muscular featured torso armor. Now, what does that mean by that? If you do, if you ever played Halo, you know that the suits around Master Chief and the other Spartans are Mjolnir-based armor. They have their own electronics. They enhance his strength and speed. It's basically the same thing there. It's entirely increasing his basic muscular structure allowing him to do things that would normally he not be able to do. Even with the enhanced strength of being a ranger, this basically multiplies it by two, three, we don't know exactly how much, I'm gonna say double it, his strength, because of the way it looks. And you can tell it's not just enhancing him personally, no, it's like the armor is formed around him, formed with these muscles, and is basically just pouring through all this power. It's where the electrical shocks come through because it's basically connecting to his nervous system there. However, we don't really see him, how strong he could be, but he can, probably lift a car with no problem right then and there. He has the wing backpack, which grants him the ability to fly, shoot out monster, uh, monster, missile launching, targeting monsters, and destroying them with basically a small little barrage, as well as being able to create a force field around himself, bring himself from damage. Now, he, all he has to do is activate this by pressing the number three button, and that was it. However, fear, confusion, and well, the un not really a need to really use it has never really caused him to push the 3 button. But if it wasn't for Sylvie, well, then we wouldn't have the first ever Battleizer. Well, I hope you enjoyed that right then and there, guys. That was a great episode. I forgot how much Sylvie was in space, but also how much Sylvie did for the Rangers. Saving them, blackmailing them, so much more. You'll never know exactly what this little girl was capable of doing. Well, we'll find out in future episodes. Have a good one, guys, and may the power protect you always.